If you're about as old as I am and you attended school between the early 90s and mid 90s, you probably will have come across Acorn computers from initially what would have been the BBC Micro, to something like the Acorn Archimedes, to the Acorn 3020. I had the most contact with this model at school. There were others as well, but this video is going to focus on something that technically never was. The Acorn Phoebe. Now, I won't be going into great detail in this video. As usual, I'm only providing a little summary of what these actually were. I'm going to leave this to the pros. I'm looking at you, Retrobytes. Come on, do a Phoebe episode. So, what was the actual Acorn Phoebe? Well, it was supposed to be the next big thing. Work had started in about November of 1996, when the project was known as the Phoebe 2100. The goal of it was pretty much to bring it more into line with what PCs were doing, in that it could actually adhere to industry standards and support things like PCI and multiple processors, but also while running existing RISC-OS applications. The case was designed in a very striking yellow colour, and the keen amongst you, if you think it looks like a certain other piece of IOMIGA equipment, then you'd be right, the case was designed by them. And if you recognise the name, this was actually in reference to Phoebe from Friends, and indeed other parts of the computer had names from there too. For example, Rachel was the processor card, Monica was a PCI bridge, and Chandler was the main chipset. But it wasn't all plain sailing, pretty much. They did receive the prototypes for the boards and the chips on about the 15th of September. It seemed to be pretty good, they ran quite well, but there was some system instability. And unfortunately, two days later, on the 17th of September 1998, the project was cancelled. It is really a shame as well. These things apparently at trade shows were seen to be running four videos simultaneously and they had such potential. But there were multiple reasons as to why this was. Not only had the project kind of overrun, but also the encroaching territory of PCs was starting to make this not really a valuable proposition. At this point, Acorn folded, and they basically just turned into doing set-top boxes. There are two surviving Phoebes, one working, one not, the working one having been held in the centre for computing history in Cambridge, England, though I did see a live stream from about three years ago and it looks like even that one isn't working anymore. But how on earth is it possible that we appear to have a Phoebe case? Well, there's actually some good news out of it. Many cases were actually made, and many of them have found themselves on eBay. I actually have one. Hence with this that we're going to try and build something today. So let's have a look at it. Now, this isn't actually the first one I've had of these. I've actually had two. I shot some video five years ago when I thought I was going to be doing this project the last time, hence the slight drop in quality. And what I appear to have was a prototype case. And there were some slight differences with it compared to the one I actually kept. It had a glossy finish, for example, whereas the other one had a standard kind of matte finish. There are also differences with the placement of the logos. If we have a look up them, you'll see that the logos are in different places. You can see the glossiness of the one on the left as well. The one on the left has the Acorn logo in the middle of the case, whereas the other one has it down near the audio jacks at the bottom. The one on the right has the Phoebe logo in the top right, and the other one doesn't have anything. Eventually, I actually kept the one on the right because it looked nicer, I liked the texture better, and it also seemed more like a version that people would have gotten had this been a real product. So I sold the other one back on eBay, and presumably someone made something of it. So that's about it, let's look at it in the present day. And here it is. It's held up quite well considering. I made sure to store it against the wall so that it wouldn't get scratched or exposed to sunlight and it was wrapped up in bubble wrap the whole time and I think it's done quite well. All the logos look as good as I remember them and uh, yeah, it looks in generally good shape. Though there are a couple of things missing, namely this IO shield at the back and I got a bit of a rude awakening when I opened the thing up on the table. It turns out there was absolutely no mounting hardware, and thus no way for me to mount a motherboard in there. It seems my mind's eye hadn't been quite so accurate. This is what it's supposed to look like, it's supposed to be a rail type system. But as you can see, I don't have that. I do have a possible solution to this, but I'll get onto that later. What it does have, however, is an easily removable hard drive bracket, which is going to make installing the hard drive an absolute breeze. I like that feature. What I will need to do as well is pull off the front, and it's meant to come off, and I had some hesitation, but it seemed to come off all right. Oh, that made me a bit nervous there. Under that, I found the floppy drive had a similar bracket system. This system's probably going to be easy to put things into. Here's a closer look at the front panel as well. And what I noticed when I turned it over, there are areas where there should be items, like for example, the audio jacks. 
and also near this thing which is quite obviously an infrared window. You can also see the area which marks when this was manufactured. And now we're done with that, let's just introduce what we're going to actually put in the thing. Okay, so I'm going to introduce the part in a slightly different way. Usually I would do this with a voiceover, but I just can't be bothered and I don't have the time. So, let's get to it. So at the heart of the system we have, of course, the CPU. And uh, being that we can't actually, you know, use... We can't get ARM parts, I mean, come on. Phoebe's, there are only two of them. I have this Pentium 2 running at uh, 233 MHz. You can probably see from there. This is the um, same speed as the strong arm CPU that would have been in there. It's got a nice little Cooler Master fan, very nice. Big beefy heatsink, so that's probably going to do good. I love that little hologram they used to put on these things. Next up is the hard drive. Yes, I did say hard drive. And here it is. You're probably thinking at this point, what on earth is he doing? Spinning rust? And I'm, I mean, I'm surprised as you. But if we want to do sort of like a by numbers approach and we want to do like traditional, then this is what we need. This is a 6.4 gigabyte hard drive. Not the first one. The guy who was going to send me it tried to test the first one and it died. <laughs> so he sent me this one instead. But it's the same capacity, 6.4. Pretty basic, really. It's a hard drive. Next we have a floppy, it's already bezel-less because the case, you know, doesn't have a bezel. Um, I haven't really tested it in anything, it's just out of my collection. I've got a growing collection of floppies, oddly enough. No idea why, so there's that. Okay, next up is the optical drive. It is a slot-loading deal. Now, unfortunately, I could only get a 16-speed, which is what this is. Literally all that was available at the time couldn't really help that, but the date is correct and this will go just nicely in the PC. I will try and find one that's a bit faster, but for the moment, that's what it is. I think I'm a bit overexposed, hold on. That's better. And there's this thing here, which I shall unwrap for you, very clumsily. This is an essential item of any NLX case and motherboard. This is the riser card. Now what this would do, I mean if you can imagine this is like the edge of it. This is like the top or the inside. This is looking at it from the side of it. The board, rather than being the first thing you put in, is one of the last. And this goes on top, basically just like this if you view it from the side. And the board slides up to meet it, going into this big slot. Um, unfortunately, Again, it's just like the optical drive. This is supposed to be a four PCI riser card, but again, this is all I could get. But uh, if anyone has one, hit me up. But yeah, riser card. Now this next item, you're probably gonna have a lot to say about it. I kind of wonder if I've uh, lost the plot, because um, it's probably gonna bite me in the arse at some point. But uh, yeah, we have a power supply. It's a 230 watt unit, which is the same wattage as the one it would have had. But I mean, um, who are these people? Like, <laughs> you've never heard of them, have you? And um, it's like, well, I mean, from the era, it's not like a brand new modern one. So taking my life in my hands here. I mean, the caps look fairly good. I mean, it doesn't look like there's any bulging caps in there. So I don't know. I mean, it could work out all right. We're going to test this separately. We're not actually going to turn it on with everything plugged in. I'm going to try and just plug it into something else so it doesn't backfire on me. And I would show you the motherboard, but I think there's going to be a slight issue with this. More on that later. But let's start prepping a few items. First of all, I'm going to start prepping the hard drive. And then the floppy drive. Nice and simple. This should make things a lot easier. Not foreshadowing anything at all. Actually putting it in the case though did turn out to be a right pain in the arse and I realised this because the M3 nuts that I had are a little bit too big. I did manage to replace them with some flathead nuts though. The hard drive just slotted in like a dream, no struggles there whatsoever. Although by the time it came to the optical drive, things were a bit different there. This thing doesn't have any brackets to mount it either, this is so goddamn frustrating. If you put it in, the optical drive just waggles around like this. Here's a shot from the side as well, and well, that's just absolutely no good. I found a temporary solution by putting in standoffs into the side to hold the back end up. I did this on one side, and then I did it on the other. But now the big test. Does the front panel actually fit on? Yay or nay? Well, let's try it. 
Well, I don't know what happened to some footage, but it actually didn't. The floppy drive was sticking out too far, which meant I had to move it down on the bracket. But eventually, I did actually manage to fit the thing on, and it fits perfectly, holding the drive steady. Now, just to try a disc, and yeah, it seems to fit fine. Now, here comes the power supply. I will test it before I actually turn it on or plug it into anything, because, to be honest, I don't want this thing blowing up and destroying equipment, but this was not really a problem to install. But now we come to yet another problem. You see, I got this riser card thinking it was going to be absolutely fine, but the problem I came across is that it doesn't actually fit. Only one out of four of the screw holes, the back right one, actually does go through. The rest of them don't line up whatsoever. So unfortunately, I cannot actually use this. I'm gutted at this point. This project has turned into an absolute disaster. And you know what the icing on the cake is? I can't find the motherboard. I don't know where I put it. I literally don't have it in my hands. Not that it would matter because the riser card doesn't fit anyway, so we wouldn't get a stable mount. I think at this point we need to admit defeat, at least for the moment. So let's join me back at the desk to conclude this part of the video at least. Well, there we go. Um, another example of things don't always go how you want them to. I am gutted about how this turned out. It just seemed like every turn there was something missing, there wasn't enough time. It's my fault partially. There's procrastination, massive procrastination on my part. Um, I didn't leave myself enough time to counter these problems. But not only that, on the motherboard, I really honestly don't know where that went. I put it in a safe place, but I've looked in all those safe places and I just can't find it. So I think for the moment we need to stop so I can regroup try this again later because this was supposed to be like a one-shot video it was supposed to be like one episode done but we do other episodes on this computer too we do lots of other things now I know what you all are saying there's one small computer that could have solved the problem with this and I kind of wish I'd done that but it doesn't matter the die is cast it's the way it is so I hope you liked what you did see hopefully there's something in there that you enjoyed for all you acorn peeps I'm hoping you uh, enjoyed this so um, yeah, comment, like, subscribe, do all those things. And uh, if you don't want to, that's fine too. I can understand this video was a bit of a wet squib, damn squib, whatever, whatever the hell you call it. For the moment though, I'm off. Again, have a nice evening wherever you are and uh, take care.